Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page Channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. And enjoy the shows. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. that our broadcast brings us into your home right on Christmas. All of us on the show and the makers of Johnson's Wax Products consider it a privilege and an honor to be included in your family circle tonight and to have an opportunity to say Merry Christmas. To those of you who've made a vow to do your shopping earlier next Christmas, we'd like to suggest that there are only 365 days left. And if you hurry, maybe you can get one of those unique and handsome articles, like the one just presented to and now being admired by Fibber McGee and Molly. Imagine old Doc Gamble giving us one of these, Molly. Isn't that the most beautiful present you ever saw? It certainly is. Gosh. I haven't seen so much chromium since that was what the Silver Service and Sarah sent us in 1937 turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> and look how solid it's built. Yeah. There's real construction in this. Certainly is well made. You don't pick these things up in bargain basements, kiddo. There was a lot of thought went into buying a thing like this. I'll bet there was. Yes, sir. What is it? <laughs> what do you mean, what is it? I mean, what is it? Why, it's one of those things that... Uh, well, you, you use it to... Well, they sort of... I don't know what it is. Well, weren't there any directions or instructions or anything in the package it came in? Nope, came all wrapped up in red tissue paper. Yards and yards of it. My eyes are still a little bloodshot from unwrapping it. <laughs> By the way, uh, what did you send Dr. Gamble this year? A book, wasn't it? Yeah, a book. What to do till the doctor comes. <laughs> but this thing, I'll be doggone if I know whether to listen to this or cook with it. <laughs> I don't know whether to tune it in, turn it on, or toss it out. Well, we just have to ask Dr. Gamble what it is. Mom. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't do that. That wouldn't be polite. And when did you start being polite to Dr. Gamble? Oh, well. You're usually at each other's throats like a couple of necktie salesmen. <laughs> yeah, but my gosh, Molly, when a guy gives you a beautiful gift like this, you hate to admit you haven't got the brains to know what it's for. Well, I don't hate to admit it. I don't know what it's for. Well, me either, but I ain't going to give that old sulfur huckster the satisfaction of knowing it. <laughs> Maybe somebody else will tip us off. And we won't Hello, have... Mrs. McGee, Mrs. McGee. Merry Christmas. Same to you, Alice, and thank you for the handkerchief. You're welcome, Mrs. McGee, and thank you for the handkerchief. <laughs> Not at all, dear. Well, if you kids are through batting them hankies around, <laughs> I'd like to ask Alice a question. Why, certainly, Mr. McGee. And if you're going to ask me what I think you're going to ask, mm -hmm. the reason Harold and I stood on the porch so long last night when he brought me home was on account of I couldn't find my front door key. Why, we never locked the front door, Alice. You knew that. Yes, I knew that, but Harold didn't. <laughs> Who's Harold, Alice? Oh, Harold 
there's a fat old lady who was a buyer for the corset department at the Bonton's nephew. She's nice, though. Who is? Harold Zahn. Oh. <laughs> She's a corset department buyer and also substitutes for the manager of household goods when she takes a day off in the basement just to the left of the elevators. Oh, down there. <laughs> Look, we got a door slam coming up here any minute, Alice. <laughs> so let's get down to business. You see this thing that Doc Gamble gave us for Christmas? Creepers, isn't that beautiful? May I use it sometime? Oh, you certainly <laughs> may, Alice. Anytime, and we'll watch it. I uh, just, uh, how do you use it, Alice? I mean, uh, I just wondered if you use it the same way, uh, same way we do. You know? <laughs> oh, I probably do, Mr. McGee. How do you use it? Now, he asked you first, dear. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure you knew how to operate it, Alice. Uh, I wouldn't want you to get hurt, you know. Get hurt? With one of these things? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee, you say the funniest thing. <laughs> well, I've got to go now. I have several more presents to take around. Where are they, Alice? Did you leave them upstairs? No, I left them right here in the hall. No, no, Alice, please. Not on Christmas night. Alice. Right here in the hall table drawer. <laughs> I thought for a minute there she was going to... the present for Ozzy I put in the hall closet. <laughs> Orchestra and Symphony. Stop worrying about that gift from Dr. Gamble. Mm. You've sat in that chair for two hours just staring at it. Well, I'm going to sit here till I figure out what it's for, too. Any hunk of chromium-plated aluminum going to make a monkey out of me. I'll figure it out if I... Hey, I'll bet it's a gopher trap. Why should Dr. Gamble give you a gopher trap? There are no gophers in this part of the country. Well, what's that got to do with it? He gave me Paris garters last year, and we're 4,000 miles from France. Well, you've been through France. You've never been through a gopher hole. <laughs> Look, let's analyze this thing. Now, here's a handle here on top, see? How do you know it's a handle? Well, it stands to reason. It's kind of a loop that just fits the hand. Well, I've got a gadget out in the kitchen with four of those loops on it, and it's an egg beater. 
Okay, okay, but let's just say it's a handle, just for the sake of argument. All right, it's a handle. Fine. Now we're getting someplace. All right, just below the handle here, there's a circular disc. That's obviously to protect the hand against something. Such as what? Such as I don't know what. <laughs> yes. Then we've got two long, sharp prongs sticking out below it, like yeah. daggers. Now then, all we got to do is figure out what a thing like that is for. Well, <clears throat> we've certainly made tremendous strides, haven't we? You knew that the minute you opened it up. Now, let me see. If I hold it like this and somebody jogged my arm, I'd have two holes in my leg. <laughs> Right, isn't there anything movable on it, dearie? No working parts? I haven't been able to find any. However, a few minutes ago, I was turning it this way and that, and all of a sudden, a sharp pain went through me. Kind of a stabbing sensation. Like electricity or something? No, like you'd left your manicure scissors here in this chair, and I'd sat on them, which you had, and I did. <laughs> well, you were using them last, dearie, cutting stamps off the Christmas cards. Yeah, well, I wanted them for my stamp collection. Got two from Indiana and one from Florida. <laughs> Found another good one from Oklahoma, but I had to throw it away on account of I couldn't tell whether it was north or south. Hey, if that's Doc Gamble, stall him a minute. If I can figure out what this gadget is for, I won't have to be humiliated by asking him it's what he... It's just he... Mrs. Carstairs, McGee. Oh, that old tomato surprise. <laughs> Miss East St. Louis of 1904. <laughs> She's had her face lifted so many times she has to walk on her toes. <laughs> Yeah, but my goodness, she's... Come in. Our old man Carstairs was nearsighted enough to... Merry Christmas, Carstairs. <laughs> and the same to you, Mr. McGee and Mrs. McGee. Thank you, Millicent. Move all those boxes and packages and things off the chair so Mrs. Carstairs can sit down, McGee. Why, Shaw? <laughs> well, Chris Kringle seems to have done very well by you, my dear. Ah, uh, he did indeed, Mrs. Carstairs. The only thing I wanted that I didn't get was a new waffle iron. Chris crossed me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I done all right, though, Carsty. <laughs> what do you think of this thing that Doc Gamble gave me? Uh, yes. Um... <laughs> I gave my husband one of those for his birthday. Oh. They make a splendid gift uh, for men. Now, what do you do with it, Mrs. Carstairs? Oh, he still has it, my dear. Yeah, but what was it for? Uh, for his birthday. <laughs> but uh, what is it good for? Well, I only know what the salesman told me, my dear. And he said it was good for years and years. Mm. Uh, by the way, Mrs. McGee, thank you so much for the lovely handkerchief. I'm so glad you like them, Millicent. And thank you for the lovely handkerchief. <laughs> They're so beautiful. I've been sitting around in drafts trying to catch cold. Look, Karsty, getting back to this gadget here, just exactly... Oh, what... I almost forgot. Let me show you what my husband gave me for Christmas. Here. Isn't it beautiful? Oh. Ah, for goodness sake. A cornet. <laughs> oh, no, no, my dear. A trumpet. Something I've always wanted. You mean you can play one of them things, Karsty? Oh, yes, a little, Mr. McGee. Well. Confidentially, I played truant from Wellesley one year and went on the road as trumpet player for Bumpsy Van Jive's original Barrel House Dance Bandits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such fun, really. And you know what? No, what, Millicent? On May 12th, I've been invited to play as guest trumpeter at the Wistful Vista Racetrack. <laughs> no kidding. Let's hear you play boots and saddles, Carsey. Oh, certainly. <laughs> Millicent. Yeah, you better go easy on that hot finish, though, Carsey. You'll have Busher and Whirlaway coming around the clubhouse turn doing the Lindy Hop. <laughs> oh, I shall have to brush up a bit, of course. I've almost lost my embouchure. Uh, what on earth is an embouchure? Well, that, my dear, is a French term, meaning an osculation in brass. <laughs> well, I must be going. <laughs> Wait a minute, Carsey. About this gadget here, what's it for and how do you use it? Well, that depends, Mr. McGee. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, he's right-handed. Oh, then of course you use it in your left hand, Mr. McGee, thus leaving the right hand free to work with. Well, Merry Christmas to both of you. Yeah. At least 
I know this thing is to be used in the left hand. That's a big help. Can you imagine her playing the trumpet, McGee? Oh. And very well, too, I thought. Yeah, I can hardly wait for her guest shot at the racetrack. <laughs> That'll be the first time anybody blew their brains out before a race. <laughs> hey, do you suppose this thing could be a potato slicer? I do not. Huh? Anybody who approached a beautiful Idaho potato with a lethal weapon like that would get a nasty note from Governor Williams. Oh, Look, huh? I have an idea. Let me see it a minute. Okay, but be careful. Them prongs are sharp. Matter of fact, a gift like this ought to be labeled from Harry to carry with love. <laughs> <laughs> Harry <laughs> Why do you want to look at it, Molly? Uh, look, now, all you have to do is write to the man who made this and ask him what it's for. Hot dog? Is his name on there? It certainly is. Stamped right into the metal. What is it? Half pending. <laughs> Molly, that's the... Merry Christmas, Molly. The same to you, Mac. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. You're just the guy I wanted to see. Yes, Mr. Wilcox. We received a simply wonderful gift. Oh, that... you mean that electric iron I sent you? Glad you liked it. Yeah, but that isn't the thing... I I'm... thought it'd be a good gift for you, Molly, considering the time you spend pressing his nibs trousers here. He's the only guy I know who always looks like he'd been smuggling cantaloupes in his pant legs. <laughs> oh, now, Mr. Wilcox. Look, Junior... When you grow up, you'll realize that clothes ain't so awful important. No. You ever try walking down 14th Street without any? Well, he means that you can't judge a man by his clothes, Mr. Wilcox. Certainly not. The seats of the mighty are often shiny, Junior. Mm. Remember that. Mm -hmm. It's better to have bags under the knees than under the eyes. There's many a dull character going around with sharp creases. Yes, I know. A wide lapel don't cover up a narrow mind, Junior. And a two-faced fellow can look awful good in a single-breasted coat. <laughs> yeah. A loud check don't make much noise in the First National Bank, too, Well, either. so what? And the horsehair out of some people's shoulder pads would look a lot better on the original horse's neck. <laughs> now, you got any more sartorical comments to make? No, Dad, I'm through. <laughs> well, good. Now maybe we can get down to business. Show Mr. Wilcox what you got for Christmas, dearie. Here, Junior, this thing. Ever see one of these before? Seen them? Why, well, I used to manufacture them. Huh? Sure. My brother, Big Sedgwick Wilcox, and I had a little factory together. Oh, heavenly days. Our troubles are over. Ah, dog. Used to build these things, eh, Junior? Well, sit down, boy. Pass him the cigars, Molly. <laughs> Have a panatella, fella. I don't use them, thanks. Oh. Of course, when I was manufacturing these gadgets, it was before I ever heard of Johnson's self-polishing local. Oh, of course, but when you made these things... Which just reminds like... me, folks, I have a little message from the Johnson Wax people. Well, are we supposed to fall on the floor with loud shouts of amazement, Waxy? <laughs> <laughs> You got more messages in your system than Western Union. <laughs> Only every tenth word is Johnson instead of love. Now, don't let him stop you, Mr. Wilcox. Go right ahead. Okay. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, the same to you, son. Go ahead with the message. That was it. Merry okay. Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the Johnson Wax people in Racine, Wisconsin and Brantford, Ontario. Now then, uh, what were you saying about this Christmas present? Well, he wants to know what it's for, and so do I. I'm sorry, Molly. I promised Doc Gamble I wouldn't tell. He said he was giving you this, and for me not to spoil the surprise. Well, Jingle Bell Kid. Jingle Bell Kid. Why, of all the dirty low-down tricks, he knew and he wouldn't tell. Maybe it's a puzzle of some kind, McGee. And you can say that again. <laughs> Hey, do you suppose this thing is a practical joke? Do you think it's liable to explode or squirt water out or something? No, I don't. Dr. Gamble doesn't like practical jokes. You know, he told me once that anybody who would give anybody a loaded cigar ought to be made to eat six of them and then have his appendix removed with a blowtorch. <laughs> ah, that sounds just like our kindly old family physician. Halfway up in the next block. <laughs> That cow town killed heir thinks the human frame is merely something for him and his buddies to play mumbly peg on. <laughs> he snoops around among the various organs like a prospect in a Wurlitzer sales room. <laughs> Besides which, if I... Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Merry Christmas, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Molly, and the same to you. Merry Christmas, McGee. Well, likewise, Latrivia. Hey, I got a kind of a problem on my hands, Latrivia. Well, glad to help you, McGee. What seems to be your trouble? It's this thing I got for Christmas, Latrivia. Look. Hmm. What's it for? 
What's it for, he says. That's all, brother. Class dismissed. <laughs> well, did you have a nice Christmas, little trivia? Splendid, thank you. And you? Just lovely, Your Honor. I gave himself here a nice leather tackle box, and he bought me a new hat. He bought you a new hat? You betcha, and a beauty, too, Latrivia, if I do say so myself as I shouldn't. It's right there on the floor, right in front of you there in that box. Say, that is a beautiful hat. Hey, hey, don't step on it, Latrivia. I won't, don't worry. I usually keep an eagle eye about me. Do you really, Mr. Mayor? That's interesting. I always carry an elk's tooth myself. <laughs> but every guy to his own good luck piece, I always say. Uh, I... You, uh, you misunderstood me, McGee. When I said I usually keep an eagle's eye about How me, I... How do you I... carry it, Latrivia? On a chain? Of course not. Don't be ridiculous. I just... Oh, said it's I... in a ring. Take your gloves off and let's see it, Mr. Mayor. I've never seen an eagle's eye ring. And... I do not have an evil eye. I mean eagle's eye. <laughs> It isn't a case oh, of Oh, what do we care if it ain't a real eagle's eye, Latrivia? You mustn't be ashamed of a little thing like that. I am not ashamed of it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I don't own one. Oh, it's one you borrowed. <laughs> something borrowed, something blue. A good luck piece will keep you true. Will you both stop this nonsense? Good heavens, I didn't intend it to may be that... nonsense to you, Latrivia, but to thousands of people, a good luck charm means something. Maybe it's an elk's tooth, maybe an old coin, maybe an eagle's eye, but a charm... I that... tell you, I have no charm. <laughs> Don't be so modest, Sir <laughs> Why, you have lots of charm. Sure you have, boy. Don't lose confidence in yourself. Just look people in the eye. I don't want to look eagles in the eye. Uh, people in the charm. <laughs> I mean to say, if I was an eagle, uh, an eagle's eye is... I'm really proud to say that I had an owl's ring, an elf's coin, two, and you mistook, you mistook, you understand, it's always a very... Every time I open my mouth, you just... I was saying... I... I... You... McGee... May I say one thing before I leave? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. What is it, Latrivia, old man? Simply this, McGee. You have your foot in Molly's hat. Good day. Huh? Oh! <laughs> the king's man with jingle bell you have probably heard this song a hundred times today but this is how we warble it down wistful just away a day or two ago when all the ground was white i thought i'd take a ride with pretty fanny bright i got my bobtail nag to 40 for his speed i hitched him to an open sleigh and crack i took the lead jingle bell jingle bell jingle all the way Open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> Bells on top tail ring, making spirits light. Oh, what fun to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh! Started back right then. For plot be waiting at the gate if we weren't home by ten. The horse was lean and lank. His fortune seemed his lot. He fell into a drifted bank and we got upside. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse. Oh, Couldn't be a bootjack. Stab yourself in the ankle every time you use it. How about a can opener? Oh, no, it's too simple. 
Oh, I got it. Hey, Molly. Yes, dearie? You know what this is? It's a potato masher. Am I dumb not to have thought of that before? If that was a masher, dearie, and I was a potato, I'd certainly slap his face. <laughs> you don't think it's a potato masher? To give you a short answer, no. Oh. Those two sharp prongs would stab holes in the saucepan and not even flat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. Well, I wish I could get the answer. As the phonograph needle said to the turntable, this thing is driving me into an early groove. <laughs> I can see just one way out, dearie. Call Dr. Gamble and tell him frankly that you don't know what his gift is for. Oh, I hate to do that. He'd have the laugh on me the rest of my life. Suppose it turned out to be a necktie rack or something simple like that. Wouldn't I look dopey? Well, my goodness, you can't sit in that chair the rest of your days glaring at it. Why don't you do something? Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Merry Christmas. Same to you, my dear. And even to you, Marblehead. <laughs> Thank you, Aerosmith. It's always nice to see you in our little home. Thank you. Because while you're in our little home, we know you're not torturing some helpless patient. <laughs> Stop it now, McGee. Why don't you two boys ever say anything nice about each other? That's a good idea, Molly. You first, McGee. <laughs> say something nice about me. My gosh, I can't think of anything. Neither can I. Oh, well, have a nice Christmas, folks. Oh, just grand, Doctor. We got so many nice things. And some interesting things, too, Doc. Yes? Some of our friends really use their ingenuity. Hmm. Now, you take... I'll get it. I'll get it. 79 was for Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Yes, he's right here. For you, Doctor. Thank you. Just tell them to put a mustard plaster on it, and if the pains start coming too close together, they're smoking too much. I see. Hello. Hello, Gamble speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Mrs. Holland. He won't. Well, tie his legs together and try again. I'll be there as soon as I can. Goodbye. Nurse? Housekeeper. Can't get our turkey in the oven. talking about? We were talking about the interesting things people send people for Christmas. Such as what, McGee? Well, now, for instance, that wonderful gift you sent McGee, Doctor. This, Doc. Oh, yes. Do you like it? Oh, do we like it? We love it, Doctor. McGee just tickled to death with it. Don't know how I ever got along without one, Doc. <laughs> well, that's great, my boy. Yeah. You had me sort of stymied there for a while, and then I thought of this. I said to myself, aha, I said, that's just the thing for McGee. <laughs> the thing I like about it is there's no complicated machinery to it. No, it's extremely simple. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, was there any directions come with it, Doc? Directions? <laughs> for a simple little thing like that? <laughs> <laughs> don't be silly, dear. You certainly don't need instructions for a gadget like that. No. <laughs> Why, there isn't a moving part on it. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> My gosh, a child could manage this. I certainly. I wonder where I could borrow a child. <laughs> hey, Doc. Yeah. I uh, I just wondered if uh, well, when you use this, that it. Uh, well, uh, what he means, Doctor, is this. You know, he thinks so much of your gift, he doesn't want to damage it by using it wrong. How do you use it? Well, great Scott, how does anybody use it? Well, that's, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> ah, for the... I give up. Look, Doc. Yes. While I really appreciate this gift... And we've always wanted one. There's, there's... one little thing I want to know. What's that, my boy? What in Sam Hill is it for? I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> well, then why did you give it to me? Because you gave it to me last Christmas, Pickle <laughs> Cook. want to solve the mystery of that gadget, why don't you call the people you bought it from? They wouldn't know. Why wouldn't they? I just happened to think. I won that thing on a punch board. <laughs> Cost me 70 cents. Oh, dear. 
Well, let's forget the whole thing. What do you say? I say this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very special Christmas. The first peacetime Christmas in five years. For millions of war victims all over the world, it isn't a very merry one, which makes us doubly appreciative of our own blessings. Among which we count the friendship of all of you who have been so loyal to us these many years. Merry Christmas to you. And good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry and inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night.